Welcome to part 3 of 5 for the series on the Active Directory Project 2.0. If you haven't seen the previous parts where we go over how to build out a diagram for this project and install our virtual machines up in the cloud, I would highly recommend that you go and watch that first. Today, our objective is to install and configure Active Directory onto our Windows server, promote it to a domain controller, and finally configure the target machine to join our newly created domain. Before we jump right in, if you're an aspiring SOC analyst and want a one-stop shop to learn the skills required to become an amazing SOC analyst, I do have a course called the MyD for SOC Analyst course, where I'll walk you through on how you can investigate suspicious activity. And you get to complete five exclusive SOC projects that I only provide in that course and many more. You can find more information down below. Let's get started. To begin, you want to make sure to RDP into your MyDefer-ADDC01 virtual machine. And I have done that right here. So now I am ready to install Active Directory and promote this Windows server to a domain controller. To do this, we can click on Add Roles and Features. Click on Next, Next, Next. And from here, we want to make sure to select Active Directory Domain Services and Add Features. Go ahead and hit next, next, and next, and install. Once it is done installing, it will say configuration required, installation succeeded on MyDefer ADDC 01. Once you see that, go ahead and close up the screen, and I'll cancel this shutdown event tracker. This is just because our server restarted after we enabled VPC networks. Once our domain services is installed, you'll see a warning icon at the top. If we click on that, we can see that, hey, it's telling us to promote this server to a domain controller. So let's do that. We have three options to choose from. We have the add a domain controller to an existing domain. That's not what we want. Add a new domain to an existing forest. We do not have an existing forest. And add a new forest. This is the one that we want. For the domain name, I am going to call it mydfir.local. Click on next. And now we can enter in a password. You don't want to make this too weak because there are some default policies enabled where if you do use a weak password, it won't let you. For example, if I just type in password, all lowercase, it'll say, hey, verification of safe mode password failed. So instead, I am going to type in a different password. Click on next, next again, and next. You want to keep clicking on next until you eventually see install. Go ahead and install this. All right, once it's done installing, we will automatically be signed out. Let's go ahead and close that. And if we wait a couple seconds, the server will restart. After a couple of minutes, let's click on our console to see our status. It is still stuck on applying computer settings. Oh, never mind. We're good to go. So let me go ahead and remote desktop in. And in theory, our Windows Server machine should now have Active Directory installed and is a domain controller now. To make sure, we can just type in active and we do see active directory nice i am going to select active directory users and computers expand the forest here which is the mydefer.local and under users let's create a new user called jenny smith and i am going to just right click anywhere under new select user the first name is going to be jenny the last name is smith and the user logon name is just j smith for the password, let's put winter 2025 <laughs> and exclamation mark. Winter 2025 exclamation mark. Because this is just a test environment, I don't really care about this. So I'm going to uncheck that. And let's just do password never expires. Click on next and finish. Now we have a new user called Jenny Smith. The next thing to do is head over to our Windows test machine. Now that we have our Active Directory set up and our server is a domain controller, we'll head over to our Windows target machine and join it to our newly created domain called mydefer.local and authenticate using Jenny Smith's account. This right here is our Windows test machine. And just to make sure, I am going to type in this PC, right click, properties. Our device name is Vulture Guest. What we want to do on this test machine is join it to a domain. And to do that, you want to select rename this PC advanced. And from here, click on change. Now we can change our computer name if we wanted to, but I'll just keep it as Vulture Guest. And under the member of, we want to make sure to select domain. 
and we'll type in my DFIR. Hit OK. And let's log in with our domain administrator account, which is administrator. Let's head over to Volter and go over to our domain controller. Copy the administrator password here. Go back over to our test machine and paste in the password. After waiting for about a minute, we get an error saying the following error occurred attempting to join the domain. The specified domain either does not exist or cannot be contacted. Okay, what this means is that there is likely a DNS issue, meaning my test machine does not know how to resolve my DFIR. So what do we do? Well, let's go back over to our network adapter. Click on change adapter options. And the one that we want to change is the ethernet instance 02. Double click on internet protocol version four. And for the DNS server, it's currently blank. So if the DNS resolves to nothing, this test machine doesn't have anywhere else to ask. So it's essentially talking to itself. Let's put in our active directory IP address, which is 10.22.96.4 and hit okay. Click on okay. Let's go back over to my domain. So we wanna select member of domain and type in my DFIR. Now let's try this one more time. And look at that, it works, perfect. Click on okay and it will say, you must restart your computer to apply these changes. Yep, that's fine. Close it out and restart now. Similar to what we did with the domain controller, let's go back, click into our test machine and let's click on the view console just to take a look at its progress. Look at that, pretty quick, I love it. I'll click on the play button, send control alt delete. And if we select other user, notice how it says sign in to my defer. So that means that our test machine has successfully connected to our domain. If you recall, we did create a new user called Jenny Smith, which has a user account called J Smith. And the password was winter 2025 exclamation mark. And now we've successfully authenticated with Jenny's new account. But I wanna show you something. If I were to RDP into the test machine using Jenny Smith's account, J Smith with winter 2025 exclamation mark, I get a logon attempt failed. Now, what if I change this to my defer backslash J Smith and winter 2025 exclamation mark. The reason why I'm doing my defer backslash is because I'm specifying the domain that I want to log into. If you take a look at the credentials that I used Previously, it did not specify my defer. Instead, it specified a computer name. So what this does is that it looks for the local account. And if I hit enter, it says, hey, do you want to connect anyway? Click on yes. And we get a, the connection was denied because the user account is not authorized for remote login. So how do we fix this? Well, if we go back over to our console and let's type in remote, click on allow remote connections to this computer and click on show settings for the first option. Go ahead and log in with the administrator account. Now the password is our domain admin password, which we can get from our domain controller. And let's paste in that password. And then click on select users. Click on add, and let's add in J Smith. Click on check names just to make sure it finds it, and it does, perfect. Hit okay, okay, and okay. Now let's try it out. So open up my remote desktop connection again, and do make sure that we use the correct account, which is my DFIR backslash J Smith with our password of winter 2025. And look at that. We are able to RDP into our test machine using Jenny Smith's account. Congratulations on configuring your own Active Directory server, creating a new user, and joining a machine to your newly created domain. In the next part of our series, we will download and configure Splunk onto our Ubuntu machine and collect telemetry from our Windows endpoints, along with creating an alert to detect successful logins. That is it for the video, and I hope that you are enjoying this project series. If you are, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.